Currently, I have a great situation. I have a supervisor who has worked in heavy equipment, knows what I'm capable of, and gives me real work, doesn't give me the inspections or the clean work. So that's fabulous. And I found out that just before I started in this shop, the guys on their own time, coffee time, sat down and said, how do we clean up the shop to make it welcoming? I'm like, dude, that's awesome. <laughs>I work um, for WestJet and I love my job. I have the respect of the men on my crew and it's a relief to finally after all these years to just be able to do my job. I no longer have to fight to prove myself. I can just do my job. I have a healthy paycheck. I have great benefits. And um, the only thing that I would like to see change or the biggest thing I would like to see change is I want to see more women out there. You know, some of us women who have come into the trades, we have the support of our families or we have these mentors that we've grown up with saying, you know, this is an option for me. It was never an option for me. Even if someone had sat me down and said, this is an option for you, I wouldn't have been listening. I would have been thinking of kittens. <laughs> But because of my circumstances, it had to be an option for me, and it turned out to be the right option for me. And not only am I supporting my family, but I'm enjoying what I do. And because I'm enjoying what I do, and I'm supporting my family, and I'm getting out there, I regained the confidence that somehow, in all these years, I lost. It was ground to nothing. So I'm a better influence on my children and a better role model. So I'm very happy with how the trades and the WIT program have changed my life. Okay, motor winders, we are high voltage equipment construction specialists. When I was a motor winder, I built generators at dams. So all that lovely electricity we have, you can thank motor winders, because <laughs> we build the generators. We build the transformers. We build all the massive high voltage switch gear, which basically switch on steroids. That's where I started. Um, when I went through motor winding, what I really didn't realize was I was the first. No one told me until second year at school. And my instructor took me in his office and he said, I want you to promise me something. And I said, what, Gord? He said, I want you to promise me you'll finish. I said, finish what? He said, finish this trade. And I said, well, why wouldn't I? And he had had, in 20 years, he'd had three women before me. They'd never made it past second year. They never came back. Dare to be remarkable. I put on my Matrix jacket for this interview at Victoria Shipyards. I was ready for anything. I'm not sure if they were ready for me. <laughs> After the meeting, I shook the welding supervisor's hand and said, thank you, I really appreciated the time. I don't want to be a welder. If you could point me in the direction of the fabricating office, I'd appreciate it. I called them every day, every day until they gave me a fitter's apprenticeship. And that is how I became the first and only, for now, female steel fitter Victoria Shipyards has ever hired.
In the coaching and mentoring and peer support, this is the most important part of our program. This is the best thing we do uh, for the women, is to help them get confident in themselves that they can go forward. And so the mentoring, we, we have mentors from industry, from all different industries that are available to us. We can call them on a moment's notice and say, a girl is struggling. She's really struggling. We know when they're in danger of leaving the program, and we can pack supports around them so they stay in. And we also continue this type of support once they hit the employment stage. We check in with them. We talk to them. We talk to their boss. Is there anything we can do? How are they doing? We'll try and provide as much support as we can because we know lots of women will start in trades training programs. And we've certainly seen that from the information presented here that many will leave. One bad experience. One bad boss. You know, a coworker who just you know, makes it really uncomfortable for you to be there, and they will walk off that site and not return. So our goal is to build a relationship with these women so that they will let us know when they're struggling. If they let us know, we can help them. Employers do not listen to answers if they haven't asked the question. And this is the problem, is getting it onto their agenda, which is a really tough thing to do. The second point I was going to make was that women do have exactly the same success rate as men do. And the problem is that for many companies, there are so few women that come through that they see that, and they don't see all of the men that come and go.
We want to work to create a supportive, inclusive environment that benefits all employees. So what's good for women is good for everyone in our company. There's no differentiation. We do want a good place to work. We want a good reputation in the industry, in the community. We want to have people want to work for us. We want to treat them well while they're working for us so that when we need them back again, um, they want to come back and work for us. So the skill shortage is so vast, it's not just in the field. We have, I'm lucky to say we do have our 5% right now in trades, uh, women in the trades, but our project managers, uh, construction managers, estimators, field engineers, I'd like to know what the overall ratio of women in our company to men, it's probably at least 20% or more. Okay, so there's opportunities up the ladder as well. Uh, it's not just in the trades.